couple of things very, very briefly in the two minutes I have. The first is this. Uh, in the, uh, some of the comments came, the, let me just flag up a couple of things. It will not be possible to defeat uh, Islamist extremism whilst uh, denigrating, for instance, people in this country who are concerned about immigration. It's not possible because a very, very large proportion of people in this country are concerned about immigration. It tends to be the number one, or if not number one, two issue in polling in this country. So, as it were, those people who just say, you know, people who talk about immigration all the time, you know, those people aren't beyond the pale. They might be perfectly decent, they are, in most cases, perfectly decent people who are concerned about an issue. And I don't think it should be glibly dismissed any more than people who are concerned about demogra uh, demographics. There are people who have serious concerns about demographics because they're seriously concerned that the society they were born into is changing beyond recognition. That doesn't mean they should be dismissed as whack job kooks or racists. They might have a perfectly legitimate point. I think they do. The second thing, it, it was demonstrated by one of the people who, who, who said, you know, the gentleman there, talked about you know, going to the protest of the Pope rally. If I may say so, this, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't there, I didn't approve of the protest because there were various things around that I think are complete guff. One of them is the fact that people love saying they went to the protest of the Pope thing. I, you know, the, the, the Pope, you know, the, 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 the sort of, you know, Pope's not, not, not on board with gay marriage. You know, I'm a gay man, I'd love to have gay marriage uh, uh, approved by the Catholic Church. But, you know, they're not going to. Meantime, I really, really wish that people would reserve their ire for the people who don't just want to stop me marrying, but want to throw me off a cliff. Much, much better way to spend your time. But of course people love it because they think, oh, I'll attack the Islamists, but then to be allowing, allow myself to do that, I can attack the Pope to show I'm not a racist. Show me a Monsignor, grab me a Cardinal, and I, and I can attack them because that will allow me. This is left-wing nonsense. Again, paedophile priests, you said. You know, if you'd have just stood there and said, you know, I mean, I'm trying to protect, to protect Muslims from paedophile imams, people would go, oh, how Islamophobic. And it, actually, in that case, it probably would be. But you say paedophile priests and smear the Catholic priesthood and it's not a problem. And thirdly, finally, getting toward the end, a lot of this problem comes down and the, thing, the, the question we didn't get on to tonight, the, 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 the fact is this, at the end of the Second World War, the Nazi leaders were tried and executed. At the end of the Cold War, it didn't happen. One of the biggest problems we have is the fact that it wasn't resolved. The people who did, who did the largest massacres, the largest number of deaths caused by any movement in history were not brought to trial. It's thought of as Ardian, the leading left-wing newspaper, had Richard Gott, one of its editors, a paid member of the KGB, a paid KGB agent who said, oh, it was just a bit of a laugh. Oh, and it still is just a bit of a laugh. Because if it's communism, it's a bit of a laugh. 70 million dead here and there, a bit of a laugh. Uh, 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 and so on. So please, let's adjust our fucking values. Um, and finally, and finally, uh, this is the, a lot of this is a simple mental breakdown of the left. I hesitate to say this in the presence of Nick Cohen, who's charted, chronicled this better than anyone. But the mental breakdown of the left, the fact that at so-called left-wing meetings, we have the obsessions with Palestine, for instance. There was one recently, again, I saw gays for Palestine. Give me a break. If gays for Palestine were in Palestine, they'd have to move to Israel. <laughs> the, the, just don't fall for this rubbish. And don't fall for it when it's coming from the right or the far right. And don't fall for it when it's coming from the left or the far left. Have some decency. I do want to talk about the, the pro-Islamist left because I do think it's very important, though there are so many issues that are going to remain unanswered. But anyway, um, I think, the, the, you know, I think the, with, with the pro-Islamist left, the, the problem primarily is that they also see my enemy's enemy as my friend. And because they perceive the Islamic movement to be anti-imperialist, um, they defend it irrespective of what, uh, what these movements and states do. And uh, in a sense, it's sort of... Uh, um, if you look at it, it, it's sort of an old anti-colonial movement. It sides with the colonies no matter what happens. And it's a sort of patronizing Eurocentric view of the colonies. And it's usually siding with the ruling elite of those colonies. So it doesn't matter how many people are massacred by Ahmadinejad, they'll defend Ahmadinejad and the Islamic Republic of Iran. And uh, we've, I've got personal experience with this in the Stop the War Coalition. When, when the Twin Towers happened, the bombing, uh, we, we went to the Stop the War Coalition meetings and uh, you know, one of the arguments we had is you've got to condemn Islamic terrorism. They refused to do it. 
And we've had actually our activists who've got banners of, uh, against human rights violations in Iran, their banners grabbed off them and thrown out of the protest, you know. Whereas you've got banners of the Islamic Republic of Iran's flag, we are all Hezbollah, we are all Hezbollah. You know, you've got lesbian women carrying that banner, you know, and you're like, you wouldn't be alive under Hezbollah's rule, you know. And, um, you know, at one protest, I stopped going to them because every woman veil in respect for Muslim women. Well, you know, a lot of women in, in the, under Islamic laws are fighting tooth and nail not to be veiled. They're having acid thrown in their faces and they're resisting. And you're telling us in London to veil in solidarity with, with uh, the Palestinian women or the Iraqi women. Uh, th there are a lot of these sorts of examples. United Against Fascism, we had a rally against Sharia law in, in front of Downing Street. al Mahajirun did a counter demonstration against us. Unite Against Fascism led a rally against the EDL, who had also come for a counter demonstration, and joined al Mahajirun. Come on! How can you be anti-fascist and join the Islamic fascists? Their response, there's no such thing as Islamic fascism, and that's the problem. The problem is that they don't see, they don't see uh, the, the fact that there are women, there are gays, there are atheists, free thinkers, socialists, left, right, human beings, human beings who are being smashed by this movement uh, and who are struggling and resisting it day in and day out, and they're siding with the oppressor. They're siding with the oppressor. So I think, especially as I'm on the left, I feel such a betrayal from this movement. Uh, and you know, that they're siding with Islamism, they're taking Islamic side at our, at our expense, at the expense of people's rights. I just wanna say one thing though, that we're not talking about people, and that's why I think there's some dishonesty going on in these debates because we're not talking about your neighbor who's anti-immigrant. As the head of the One Law for All campaign that has gathered you know, 27,000 supporters in a very short time and that has been challenging the Islamic movement day in and day out, I have a responsibility to target and bring light to and expose not just Islamism but also the far right that is hijacking that issue in order to attack Muslims other citizens in this country. A, a, a movement that doesn't give a damn about the stoning of Sakina Mohammad Yashiani. That Muslim bitch deserves to die. Those are the sorts of emails you get from them. Okay, so I have a responsibility. I'm not talking about individuals. Your neighbor might be anti-immigrant, I don't care. But when you have a movement that is organizing people, bringing football hooligans into the street, I have a right to attack them and condemn them. That is my job as an activist. And just as they have a right to speak, I have a right to speak. And I won't stop speaking about this. I think it's important. We have to distinguish who our enemies are because we will not win if you have the far right taking over the debate. The gov governments refuse to uh, decide this. The vast majority of people are anti-Islam, but they're not racist. They have to see a non-racist, anti-racist alternative to fighting Islamism, and we are that alternative. And that's why I think it's important. This seminar is one of many seminars, conferences, rallies we've had, but this issue is one that we've been grappling with and felt we needed to focus on this. So maybe you think we're not dealing with all the issues, but the reason for this is because this needs to be discussed and, and addressed. Thank you. Thank you very much.